Welcome back to another episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. I am your host, Troy Stegner, and I have a local actor, producer, director. Uh, did I leave anything off the list? No, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Frank Powers. You've probably seen him in a few commercials, actually, on TV also. Uh, and probably seen him in a few movies. You didn't realize it was him. So uh, welcome, Frank. How's it going? <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Uh, but let's just, uh, what, what are you working on right now? Do you have anything exciting? Um, right, yeah, right now we're, we're starting, uh, I guess we shot a trailer for a children's movie. Not children, but like a kid's movie, like a teenager. Kind of like, we, we kind of call it, we're, we're calling it uh, the Goonies of today. So, that, <laughs> so that's what we're, we're working on right now as far as film-wise. So, and we've shot the trailer Right now, we're just shopping around for investors. So. Is that going to be filmed locally, or are you going to be out of state on that one? Yeah, so it'd be filmed in El Paso. Awesome. Yeah, El, that pa local well, El Paso and Las Cruces. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, how did you get in, start into acting? I, I know I read your bio. Um, said you know you were you kind of got hooked at a young age. Right. But then you didn't actually do any acting until, I mean, you had retired. You're ex-military, so it was after you retired, yeah. or not actually retired, but toward the end of your career. Right. So how did you uh, how did you get the bug for acting? And when you finally got your opportunity, how did that come about? Yeah, so I guess when I was a kid, like I saw other kid actors, right? Like in movies like Goonies and stuff. They look like they're having a good time. I wanted to have a good time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, then you, when you're young too, so media was different then than it is now. Like then you relied on TV, the newspaper, a magazine, like you couldn't just go search something, you know, you can go to the library and look something up, very limited information. So you saw the Grammys or the Oscars and you think, oh, these people are rich and famous and happy and that's what you want to be, right? Right, yeah. So, so when I saw that, I thought, well, I could do that, right? <laughs> so uh, obviously, I was I was lower middle class, I guess, growing up. Like my family wasn't rich. My my dad had to work forty plus hours a week to pay the rent. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. I didn't have opportunities where oh, they could fly me out to a <laughs> to an audition in L.A. Because at that time, that was the standard, right? You went down to New York City, you auditioned, you flew out to L.A., you auditioned or you didn't get a job, right? <laughs> now, now the internet, everybody can just get online. You can audition just like we're doing right now. I could be auditioning for a part, you know? So, so the opportunities are there more when I got older for me, like other people obviously had opportunity lived in LA. If you were, your parents had money or whatever, you know, but when I was younger, I thought that's what I want to do. Obviously I couldn't do it. So, uh, we, you, you hung out with the kids on your block, right? Like whoever was in your neighborhood, you met them in school. Oh, you live a block over. Oh, you live on my street, whatever. That's the kids you hung out with. One of the kids, his dad had, a the VCR video cameras. So, so I was like, Hey, let's make movies, right? We're 11, 11 years old, you know? So we come up with some crazy scripts and mostly horror stuff because it's super easy. Like we just shot around the house while everyone was asleep making horror movies with stuffed animals, right? So, like, that's how I started, and that's what got me into it. And I thought, there's a possibility, right? But for editing, we had to edit on the fly. Like, you'd have to say, walk in the door. If it didn't look good, you had to re rewind it, tape over it, do it again, you know? So we didn't have editing equipment or anything like that. And I always thought, well, if it ever got to where you could put a video into the computer, then I could definitely make movies, right? So... <laughs> So then after I graduated high school, uh, I went into the army because you need a job, right? You have to pay your bills. <laughs> so I went into the army and uh, I guess the opportunities arose when I was stationed here at Fort Bliss. And then there was a big film boom, like 2008, 2009 in uh, Albuquerque. Like it just became a lot of film and then it just seemed more real to me and I had money, right? I had a car. I could drive up there if I wanted to. So, and it wasn't that far. So what I did is just started doing that and I met a couple people and then they're like, Hey, you want to get in this movie? And like, um, I'm sure you're 
vaguely aware. Like one of the first ones I did was Terminator Salvation. And I didn't realize that that was a Terminator film. So like, because they had it under Project Angel. And then it wow. sounded like, and the description they gave me sounded like a ripoff of the Terminator. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, it's a sci-fi thriller called Project Angel. Some people still say it's a ripoff of Terminator. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was. It absolutely was. So then, so then I went up there and I did that. And then on set, well, prior to that, actually, when I was in Korea, I got, I met some people over there. And one of them was an agent for foreigners in Korean film. And then I got to, while I was in the army, got to get on a TV show that shot on Saturdays and my unit let me go and I filmed and then I was on that TV show Yanchi Day and they just made me a character. So to me that was like, oh shit, you know, I did it. Like I got on a show, I'm talking, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you have and to learn Korean I, for that? What's that? Did you have to learn a lot of Korean for that? I spoke English. I played a US military CID agent and they just subtitled me. And the <laughs> and the lines were really bad because they were translated <laughs> by them. So then I would just have to do the line and they'd keep telling me like, no, no, that's wrong. And I'm like, no, that's right. <laughs> what you're telling me is wrong. But I guess it's like a big deal for their translator to get it wrong or, you know what I mean? Because right, it makes right. them look bad. So I had to work with the translator every week. So they'd send me the script early. I'd have it fixed, send it back to the <laughs> translator. And then he'd give it to them and say, oh, this is what I did, you know? So you didn't get any translator credits on that show? No, absolutely <laughs> And then, so I did that, and then what that's, I, the reason I uh, referenced that is because when I was on the set of Terminator Salvation, Mick G, who was the director, his assistant was a Korean girl and instantly recognized me because I was the oh. highest rated TV show in Korea ever, to date. So, like, <laughs> she recognized me and was like, uh, oh, you're on Yang Day, you're on Yang Day, because just thinks I'm an actor, right, because I'm there. Right. The set, she's working for Mick G, you know what I mean? So then, and then she was like, do you have an agent? And I was like, no. And then she went and talked to someone. They came back and they're like, hey, you want to sign up with our agency or whatever? And I was like, yeah, for sure. You know? <laughs> so I did. And then that led to, as you know, like the Avengers, Book of Eli, all those films that filmed up there in Albuquerque. It was just easy after that because they just contacted me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, we need a soldier. Yeah, I can be there in three hours. Hold on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wow, I mean, you know, because you've named off a lot. I mean, you you've been in the periphery of a lot of the big movies, um, right? Uh, like you said, Book of Eli, Avengers. Uh, there was Sicario. Yeah. Uh, those are just a few off the top of my head I can name. Um, so then you came back to El Paso. Um, how hard is it for you to get acting gigs living here in El Paso? So, like commercial acting is pretty easy. Like uh, a lot of the local people know me and they think because I was in a movie, like, oh, that'd be great to have me in my commercial, right? right? So like, that's that's pretty good for that aspect. Now, as far as like feature films and stuff, there's not a lot going on in El Paso, you know? But there, it does seem to be picking up in Las Cruces. Once in a while, a feature will come in and shoot somewhere up there or um, Deming and stuff like that. So that, So that's good, you know? As long as you stay on top of it, you know yeah. what's coming, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, and, and well, not just in front, you're not just in front of the camera. You also, like I said, done some producing directing. Um, right. Yeah. And I think you have a movie that's getting ready to, from what I understand, it's going to be releasing soon. Was uh, yeah. The Brother James Retribution. Yep. So um, after, I, after I did those other films in uh, Albuquerque, I thought, Hey, I could do this now, right? Because I said when I was a kid, if I could put the film into a computer, I could make a movie. And now it's a reality, right? Yeah. So I was like, hey, I could do that. And then so we did, and I did a couple of things with uh, local people here that are also into film. Like one of them was Luis Perez. He's he was he's the film instructor at uh, Socorro uh, School District. So he does all the film for the kids out there. They even made it a program because it used to be like. Uh, Nice. Uh, where it used to be like a club, right? And then they actually club. put it into curriculum. Yeah, and then they actually put it into the curriculum and made it a, a program now. So he does that, so the kids can take film in school. You know what I mean? 
So he does that out there. So I worked with him and some of his students. They did they did student films for like a film fest that they do for the district school district, and then they have genres. They do it like a forty eight hour film fest. They give them you know the line and the prop and the genre, and then they do it. And I worked with his his team a couple times, and they obviously always won, right, first place. <laughs> oh, so, of course. Yeah. So uh, which is terrible, right? But. <laughs> cheating out the other kids but uh so so what happened with that is then i realized like hey it's a possibility now to do you know like if anyone has a really good digital camera you have good editing software which is readily available to the masses like anybody could do that if they have that passion or drive or want to do it you know so then i thought well let's go big scale let's scale it up and start making the western right and that, and at that time i don't know why it got into my head that westerns were making this resurgence and like <laughs> oh westerns are going to come back strong so i thought yeah i'm just going to do a western because i want to be on the bandwagon right when all these westerns come out i want my western to be on. <laughs> so i just decided to do that we came up with a really cool story uh michelle helped me refine it like to where it was interesting and not just guys shooting guys you know <laughs> so we gave it a little storyline we did that western and then it took a while it took a lot to get funding. It took a lot to get people on board, but finally we got through it. And then we got, we went, we, we frequently go to LA too, like for meeting with people and investors and auditions and stuff like that, which a lot of people don't know, but behind the scenes, you know, we were constantly working for that. And then uh, through things like the comic cons and your comic con and, uh, events that they had around here they bring people in which are actors and stuff like that and you know some of them like uh marilyn gigliotti from clerks she's been in a couple times or whatever so we used to go out there to see her because see what she's doing and she hadn't done a lot in film since clerks but she did a couple you know because some fans of that cult genre or whatever would ask her hey be in my movie like i'm a independent filmmaker you were an independent film, be in my movie. And so she's got work that way. But I know that shooting Clerks or Clerks 3 is coming out. Mm -hmm. So like they're starting that and she's supposed to be in that. So that'll be really good for her, I think. Are we going to see you in the background of Clerks 3? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I partnered up with Ock Realty. I don't know if you know them but from uh, Scotland. And we did the... the uh, I guess it's a mockumentary shooting clerks. Yeah. Is the making of clerks. Yeah. And that that's should be coming out anytime soon, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, definitely. And and like I said, I've been looking forward to Brother James Retribution for ever. For a little while now. Yeah, I think that you were working that well, the first time we met at one of the local events. I think you were yeah. in the booth next to us and that was the first I heard about it. And I was like, wow, a humorous western. That's those always work. I don't. I don't care <laughs> what's hot right now. Uh, right. A, a good humor movie will always work. So I, I'm. I'm waiting for that one. I, I think it's going to be big. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but, so, uh, one thing you asked if I had an NDA. I can't talk about anything. One. One thing was uh, like who's going to release it. Like I'm not supposed to say until they give us the approval that they're going to release oh. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we already have the contract. We just can't say anything until they give us a release date. But it's one of the top three uh, movie studios in the United States. So, is there going to be a big uh, release party here locally then? Uh, yeah, it will oh, be. Oh, that'd be great. So, uh, like, one of the things that you contacted me about recently is that we're opening a store. Like, uh, it's gonna, it's like a kind of, we call it a retro clothing store. But it also, it, like, now, right now, streetwear, I don't know if you're familiar with the kids and what they're wearing and shit, you know, like, if you're keeping up with that. Yeah, I don't know what those whippersnappers are doing right. anymore. So, so now they're into this style that they call streetwear, which is, like, our daily wear in the 90s when we were kids. You know what I mean? Like, where <laughs> we you call that yard work and, clothes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, they're getting into that. So that's, like, a style that'll be in the store, you know. And then it's obviously all the throwback stuff, like the old uh, shirts from the 80s, 90s, all the cool movie shirts and stuff like that. 
are these going to be like your own design or no so so the the streetwear and there's like just daily wear and stuff like that that is our own designs and like we're doing a sneaker match like so jordans are big right now right like all the yeah, retro all the jordans heads. yeah with the sneaker heads so we're doing sneaker match clothing also where the shirts will reflect the colors of the types of jordan that you have that you wear and stuff like that so so it's a few different genres of clothes but it's a retro clothing shop like it's all based 80s 90s style and that's going to be opening soon here in el paso yeah that'll be march 1st is when it opens at sunland park mall nice you're going to have an online presence with it uh yeah so we'll have a, we have a website so we'll, right now it's just coming soon website right because being built <laughs> but uh yeah we'll have a website where people can go on and buy the styles and stuff like that i got your fingers in just about everything it sounds like uh, i try to <laughs> Wow. So I was going to ask what you had coming up, but I guess that answers the question then. Um, any big movie roles you got coming up? I don't have any big movie roles signed right now. Right? Ah. But uh, like I said, we're working on that children's project, which we'll be bringing in. So for that, for that movie, we're bringing in actors that are well-known actors that are going to be in wow. the film. So, so I guess in a sense, you would say that would be like a big movie role coming up because if I were to act in that movie, right, <laughs> it, it would be uh, with other big known actors that you know that are popular today. So, which which would be good for us. It would be good for local talent. It would be good for the film, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Can't wait to see who uh, who you're going to bring in for that. That'll be crazy. And like you know, all these big movies you've been in, you you've interacted with a lot of these big name, you know, uh, A-list people. Do you have any cool stories behind the scenes from any of these guys? Oh, yeah. Like tons. <laughs> that you can like, share? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, one one is like one of my first ones since, uh, like I said, uh, Terminator Salvation, like that, I got on that. That was one of the first ones that I did, right? Everybody that knows about film I guess like knows about the incident with uh Christian Bale yelling at the lighting guy right yeah the thing with that is that was like my scene in that film was I don't know if you remember the the scene from the movie where he's going out to fight the Terminators right he's going to he's gonna leave his wife she's pregnant and she freaks out and he she he's like she's like what if I what how would you feel if I was gonna die and I had your baby or whatever because she thinks he's essentially going to die right leaving John Connor's going to fight the Terminators at Skynet headquarters and so he's dead right yeah definitely. So, so so what what happened in that scene is I'm standing next to him like we our one is next to each other we walk into the scene together he starts arguing with her about that like he's leaving she picks up a gun and like pulls a gun off of him, puts it to her head and said, how would you like if I die right now? I'll kill myself right now if you leave, whatever, whatever. So it's like a real emotional scene, right? And that's where the guy was walking back and forth in, the, in his eye line. So he was trying to be emotional, but he was being distracted. So then he kind of flipped out, right? Which to me, if you don't flip out on someone that's unprofessional, you would ask the director, A, hey, shut it down. I need a break. Like stop that guy, whatever. You know what I mean? But he went like right after that guy. So <laughs> it made like all this commotion and problems. They shut the whole shot down. Well, in that scene, I'm, she, she sets the gun down on a generator and I go in and I grab the gun and it was my big scene. Right. And I tell him, John, is everything okay? <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, I got this. And then he talks, uh, gives her a hug and kiss and I walk off. And then that got cut out because we never shot it because of that whole, issue oh. so i was like oh this is great so now i'm just standing here in the movie looking cool you know <laughs> yeah it's amazing some of the stuff that hits the cutting room floor yeah <laughs> and then one one other thing was like on uh, lone survivor which i don't think we mentioned but on lone survivor i played one of the navy seals with uh mark Wahlberg. he's the lead and then uh i don't know how it started but Oh, I know how it started. Uh, the uh, so the I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, right? Because I'm from upstate New York, and he's uh, he's uh, obviously a New England Philly. Patriots. Fan. Well, was right? <laughs> oh, yeah. he was. No, well, he likes Philly, right? But New England Patriots is his team, like really his team, like that he roots for. Tom Brady, 
Mark Wahlberg, they're from Boston, you know. So, yeah. so that was like his team. So they were playing, and it, we we often would beat one time out of the year. We would beat New England, <laughs> but they beat us every other time, right? Like for years. So I was talking smack that the Bills were going to beat New England that weekend, like while we were filming, because we always take a break for Saturday and Sunday. And then the game would be played, right? And we come back Monday. So then what happened is obviously the Bills lost because they've been losing for 20 years straight, right? So so what happened with that was uh, I started talking smack. So then we he had a football that he carried around on set. Like there's a few things that happened with that football, right? But he carried this football around on set. And so uh, he, he threw it to me because I was saying about the Buffalo Bills are going to be New England Patriots or whatever. So I threw it back to him and he's like, Oh, you want to play? And I was like, Oh, of course. Right. It's Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> so then he's like, okay, you get this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, like all these old grips and people on the, in the standing <laughs> around like this guy, I don't know. He's a medic. He looks like he's going to die. He's like, Oh, they're on your team. And then he picks all these young kids that are <laughs> playing Navy seals with him. Right. So anyway, we played, we played football against each other, like my team against him. Right. And he used to call me Buffalo because of that so then what happened is um the i guess one headlight link ink oh you heard of them they're like a media company up there they were there and they were covering like you know the filming and stuff and they filmed us playing football and then when i went back to the hotel at night and i watched the news it showed us playing football on the local news so that was pretty cool who who won uh so what happened is (laughs) No, I have some video. I had it up on my Facebook, right? Mark Wahlberg is really fast. Like, you wouldn't believe it, but obviously he would, right? He looks like he's really fast, and he was really fast. <laughs> so, so, like, he scored the touchdowns easily. But the next break, I was doing something. Like, I had to go to – oh, I had to change out my top because my button broke. So, I had to go to wardrobe. I had to change out my top, and he continued to play against my team without me and ran up the score <laughs> seven to one. And then when I came back, he proceeded to tell me you're down seven to one. And I was like, how can I be I didn't even play. How could I be down seven to one? He's like, that's not my fault. So, so we had that rivalry for about three weeks on set. And then we were playing inside the building where we're shooting at uh, I 25 studios. That was in, that was Kirtland air base, like on the flight line. And then we're right. playing in I 25 studios. And he had his football, and he, we said, we're going to bring sneakers, right? Because I told him that's why he was faster than me, because I was in boots. <laughs> so we said, we're going to bring sneakers. So we brought sneakers, and he had his on his chair. And he was filming the scene, and I was actually in the outside part of that scene. So, like, inside the briefing room, I was sitting at a picnic table before they all went inside the briefing room. I stayed outside. And they all went in and did a briefing. And on that scene, I put Go Bills on his football like wrote gold bills on his football. And then people were saying, he's going to kill you. Like literally he's going to kill you, you know? So then it became a joke that every time he saw me, like uh, he was going to murder me, you know what I mean? Like to all the cast and stuff. So that was pretty funny. And then, and then a funny thing about that is uh, my sister was a huge new kids on the block fan, which I know you know. (laughs) So she was a huge new kids on the block fan. And we, she lived in Long Island, New York at the time, which is where my family's originally from. And uh, they used to drive down or they would go to LaGuardia airport for when all the flights came in and try to see new kids on the block coming back from <laughs> concerts and stuff. And then she would drive down to North Boston where Donnie Wahlberg lived and she would park in front of his house and wait till he came home to get a picture with him out front, which she had done multiple times like she has tons of pictures with Donnie Wahlberg right so she did it and this one time Mark was in like uh, sweatpants and he was on the porch eating cereal with no shirt on and he started yelling at my sister and she was yelling at him and he was like get out from in front of my house stalker or whatever right and she's like f you it's a free country I could park on the road if I want to whatever right so they used to do that every once in a while him and her and then Donnie would show up and she would just blow Mark off and go take pictures with Donnie. Cause Mark at that time was like 15, 16 and he wasn't popular yet. Right. Right. So then uh, when I, when I saw him, she, so when he became popular, she saw him at LaGuardia airport and she took a picture with him and he was doing uh, some celebrity basketball thing or something. And he had broke his ankle 
at that time. So he was on crutches and he didn't want to have crutches in the picture with the fan, you know? Right. So he had her like kind of hold him up by like hugging around his waist and take the picture. So then I, she sent me that picture while I was on set. And then I showed him the picture. I said, Hey, I think you know my sister. Right. And he goes, nah, I don't know your sister. Like he said, I know so many people, like I met so many fans, so many people, there's no way like I could remember that time with your sister. Right. So I was like, no, nah, I think you do. And then I showed him the picture. Right. And then he's like, uh, Holy crap. I know her. <laughs> like She used to sit in front of my house every day. Right. She was crazy. All this stuff. And then he's like, uh, He's like, yeah, that picture was when I broke my ankle and she had to hold me up, like, to take the picture. And I said, yeah, that's what she told me about the picture, you know? And he's like, man, that's so crazy. And then that's why I think, like, we just started messing around on set, you know? Bonded over your stalker. Yeah, sister. her picture. <laughs> my crazy sister. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and for people who don't know, Mark Wahlberg used to be a rapper before he was actor. <laughs> and yeah. he has a famous brother who was in a band, New Kids on the Block. Because I love these, like you were talking about the young kids. They they have no idea what New Kids on the Block is. <laughs> or Marky Mark and his Calvin Klein underwear commercials. So, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's that's good. A lot of these. Guys. It's good to hear a lot of these uh, actors that people kind of idolize are actually really nice people. Because uh, you know, running events, I, I meet a lot of them too, and it seems like <laughs> about half of them are real prima donnas. So. Right. It's good to hear when, when they're not. No, yeah, I think I've been lucky. Met some nice people, you know. Like Denzel Washington was super nice to me, so. He Just, seems like he's a really nice guy. He was. That, he was a really nice guy. That was on Book of Eli, I guess? Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I also worked with him on uh, Magnificent Seven. Oh, that's right. And he yeah. remembered me, so that's good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we ate lunch on Book of Eli together. It was the last day of filming. There was a very small casting crew. It was like him, two other actors, Gary Oldman. Like, uh, it was very, very small, right? And then uh, at lunch, they were giving out like gift bags that he got for everybody. And it was a canvas Book of Eli bag and it had a bunch of stuff in it, like t-shirts and stuff. Oh, wow. And then he brought it to me. He's like, hey, did you get a gift bag? And I, and I was like, uh, no. Like, am I supposed to get a gift bag, right? And he's like, hold up, hold up, I'll go get you one. So he went and got it and sat down with me and ate lunch, and he had, like, a couple bodyguards with him. Wow. And then, that, that, this is an interesting story, too, right? So he got a phone call while we were eating, and it was for, I guess, that movie Flight or something. Right. Where he was a pilot. So he got a phone call for that, and then he, he's like, hey, and he was talking to them, but we're eating, right? So he was like, hey, I'm going to put you on speaker because I'm eating lunch. So he set the phone down on speaker on the table and then he's like I just want to let you know I'm here with like Ronnie John and then he's like what's your name and, he, and I told him Frank and then he's like and my boy Frank like we're eating lunch right now and so that was pretty cool you know wow. and then he started and then he started talking to me after he got off the phone he started and he was saying about like October he's gonna film whatever and he's like hey so do you ever get out to LA or did you come here from LA and I was like no I'm local and then he's like oh that's really good that you get in these movies and you're from here you know and I was like, yeah, I'm just lucky, I guess, with that. And then he's like, you got to go to L.A. And I was like, L.A. is like a lot of money. And then he went into this big oh. speech, right, <laughs> where he's like talking. And he sounds like Denzel Washington. You know what I mean? Right. So I was just sitting there having like flashbacks of training day. And he's screaming at me like, you can't get to L.A. You got like, lectured oh. by Denzel. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Well, actually, we've been in a movie together now that I think about it. Uh, was it the space between us that yep. they filmed out at the uh, yep. spaceport? Um, yep. And it's funny because uh, we weren't there on the same days. I, I right. was just an extra and you were one of the guards, I believe for yep. uh, uh, Gary Oldman's character. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you can have the acting is just that little taste I got. <laughs> that was uh almost 14 straight hours of nothing but repetitive motion doing the same. Yep. Right? And I lost my voice from, uh, cause cheering. Was, yeah. The scene was the, the dinner scene when he was given the speech yep. and then they roll open the, the bay doors and you see the, the rocket out there, which was CGI in. there was nothing out there but desert. And uh, it was just 14 hours of standing up, looking surprised, clapping and cheering. 
I, I almost lost my voice. I, it was a long, hot, dreadful day because we were in suits and yeah, yeah, man, more power to you. You can you can have that job. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think I pretty much. I, I have one more question I wanted to ask you that I typically ask everybody. So uh, I want to see what your take on this is. And, and the question is, cake or pie? Always cake. Always cake. Wow, you're in the minority, I'm actually. Sweet, I'm a sweets guy, so. Yeah, yeah, most people pick pie. Any specific type of cake? Uh, I like chocolate cake with white icing. There you go, guys. If you want to be in one of uh, Frank's movies, bring him some chocolate cake. That's it. <laughs> Well, Frank, I want to I want to thank you for taking your time out of this uh, this weekend to uh, answer all my silly little questions, and yeah, for sure. wanted to wish you good luck on on the store and Brother James, and uh, I, I'm looking for a, a front row ticket when Brother James uh, has her premiere here in town. Yeah, you got it, bro. You got it. Awesome. Uh, thanks again, and uh, I'll see you next time. I'll probably be there. I'm trying to get there for your store opening. Awesome. All right. Look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. All right, bro. All right. Later, Bye. nerds. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on. Is it card or What kind of class do you play, girl? In an RPG.